Oh, hello. Sorry, I didn't notice you back there. I was rehearsing, kind of. You know, you caught me in the middle. Um, that wasn't the show. <laughs> no kidding, of course it was. Good evening, everyone. Um, you are witnessing 33 Minutes with Anna, the stage talk by Rockdance Theater, which is my humble self, so welcome. Why do we have an overdrive over here? <sighs> okay, that's the base on my exhale. I'll try not to breathe so much. Anyway, um, today is gonna be a fun show because it's our third, correct that, third edition of uh, our live episode. Um, those of you that don't know me yet, hopefully you will by the end of the evening and uh, yeah. I always plan to, to score new friends when I always do these talks and uh, literally it did come from a situation of an interview like that. So pretty much the idea of this is uh, to talk a little bit about stage, to do some stage action as you just witnessed, so like high legs, whatever. But I will explain to you why it is as it is and why rock dance theater it's called as it is as well. If you kind of translate rock, we all like it, right? I hope. <laughs> At least I'm hooked a little bit on this genre lately. Dance theater, which is always what I've done. Professionally, I'm a choreographer and a dancer. I'm in Wrocław, my third year. Got the fingers right. Um, and pretty much uh, I tell about myself that I'm a local artist, at least for three days out of the calendar because I travel constantly. Either way, um, Rock the Theater has been born three years ago. Again, number three, amazing, right? <laughs> Maybe we get other numbers today, let's see. Um, it was born in the middle of the night. You know, these kinds of moments where you wake up and you feel like you're different or something switched in your brain it was exactly like that. So instead of drinking beer, I was kind of like, wait a minute, I like this tune that I'm watching and the tune actually was coming from YouTube, we all know it. It's the 21st century of technology, I'm sorry to say. But I was watching a video by uh, Steven Tyler. Do we know who that guy is? Steven Tyler, Aerosmith, right? The crazy, <laughs> you know, person? Either way, check him out. Um, Dream On, a song that has been written a really long time ago. I found a recording from 1973. Joe Perry on guitar, Steven Tyler on his crazy vocals. And I figured kind of, wow, this is cool. It's sucking me in closer, like, you know. So after that, I pretty much played it for hours and hours. 7 a.m. came. Normally you should go to work by now. Does anyone work like a regular day job? I know I don't, so it's kind of different for me. All right, too bad for you. But it's all okay. We don't discriminate, right? Either way, the next morning, sun comes up, you know, time to get coffee and stuff. And I go, I gotta play guitar. And there was always one in my family. Funny enough, my mom got one from her grandfather. And it was the most beautiful guitar ever. Small, a little bit smaller than this one, and golden. How much better can it get? Especially it would fit to this establishment because I laugh that this is the most gold as anyone could possibly get in a club. Name me a club where everything is freaking golden, even when you go in. It's like, doof, you touch it and it turns into gold. Not many. So either way, um, I just felt I got to play. And I've never learned to play an instrument. You know, um, working in theater, stages as such, big nor or small, I've been always working with music. So pretty much the thing was that it did exist in my life, not on a practical level. So I went like, wait a minute, this is a cool idea. Rock, I like it dance theater, I was always doing. How do I name this shit? Rock dance theater, bang, I got it, right? So I sat down the very same day and night, wrote down a concept, one page of A4, bang. Next day, it was just that. Because before, if anyone knows me, I was working under my own name, doing shows for like 18 years, meaning choreographing, performing, teaching, training. And so yeah, it's a pretty much a new baby, if you will. And uh, I'm very excited to share with you guys. So, of course, you have no idea what I'm talking about because the full format of a show, it's a little bit bigger than this establishment, but what you've just seen, a weird kind of action with a chick that is contorting in weird places. Oh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> that's exactly what I do. Just incorporated with guitars and people and amps and fashion and stuff. 
So, you know, if you do have internet, we all know you do, and also you guys watching online, hello. Take out your phones right now. I'm serious. Come on, I know you got them. Back pocket, front pocket, bag, we all do it. I have two. The times we live in. And be so kind to scroll, go into Rock Dance Theater, click subscribe, and you will be awarded with golden diapers at some point in time in the future. I'm gonna give you one minute for that, so while you do this, I go and get a drink or whatever. No, but when told, honestly, I'm gonna tweak my guitar because I do wanna play one tune for you and I'm gonna explain why. I'll see you in a bit. The awkward silence, I know. Keep scrolling, you're gonna find it. That's rock, like a piece of rock that you throw, same thing, yeah? And music genre, same thing, four letters. How are we doing? Are we finding it? I'll help you later, don't worry. We all grab a beer, we all sit down, we all go on YouTube together. I'm almost ready here while you guys are scrolling. I'm just gonna start. It's good enough for rock and roll, so we might as well just hit that. Me generation is all about me, 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 again, 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 again. Either way, uh, you are too kind. <laughs> I did not get the guitar effect that I wanted. Bummer and an excuse. But um, it's not about that. Uh, basically, this tune uh, I wanted to throw especially your way 
because it's a very cool tune straight off the record of a guy called uh, Ryan Roxy and he's a guitarist pretty much for 20 years plus of Alice Cooper and the album that he done a soul, as a solo effort just dropped in May last year I just spent three days in Sweden listening to this stuff live big gig small gig doesn't matter um, it's in my brain but why I mentioned this one particularly it's called me generation which speaks exactly about what we've just done taking out our phones and hopefully getting a new subscriber thank you so much for doing that if you really did because unfortunately that's how art works these days and um, one of these talks which is exactly partly what I'm doing here it's not only to interest you in the work itself, but as well, it is one of the main ways to kind of get a following these days. Funny enough. So if you've done that, thank you so much. We are new friends right now. One, two, three, yay! <laughs> Say hello outside this establishment, yeah? Peter, I know already, so that doesn't really count, but it's awesome that he's here as well. He's a photographer, by the way. If anyone needs one, highly recommended. He shoots rock, and not only. So yeah, how cool is that? So basically, um, if you enjoyed at least one chord of the song, please look it up, Ryan Roxy, album called Imagine Your Reality. A bunch of cool shit, that's all I'm saying. From blues, through hard rock, through heavy rock, it's guitar driven either way. If you remember the times like I do, back in the 90s, even though I look young, but the dance preserves well, um, you will check out three and a half minute songs of classic rock. You cannot get closer to Cheap Trick or, you know, Aerosmith or whichever one of those. So if you enjoy that, please look it up. We will all be happy if you do. Um, but yeah, one thing that I wanted to um, actually talk about uh, tonight is as well kind of connected to culture. I've worked with all kinds of people in my day and I started off really, really early on as a kid. I know Donna doesn't know much about these things because it's always like a surprise when I come on. It's like, what the fuck is she gonna do today? Like, screw up his studio, right? Break something. <laughs> I have no idea what just fell down, but, I, but it felt like a wooden piece of something. I'll pretend that didn't happen. It was supposed to be a part of the show. Um, but one thing that is quite interesting is actually um, that Donut wa would love to ask a couple of questions, either from the audience or the ones that he's scared to ask himself. That's why it's called the stage talk. We get a chance to kind of know each other. I was born in Poland, but I was raised in California, so that's a little bit of information for you right there. And funny enough, someone asked me just recently on a radio broadcast, how do you survive European weather? And I'm like, well, California girl got and cold. That's all. A lot of coffee and we just like go through it. Um, so yeah, if you do have any questions, you can either post them directly or just raise your hand and we'll kind of try to get to you. It's a small club, I can see all of you, like, with eye contact, so on that level, you cannot hide, even if you do have one. Hello and welcome, whoever is coming in late. You have reached the central of Rock Dance Theater and 33 minutes with my humble self. Hello. Don't forget to pay your bills. And then, you know, on the other side, we do have this element of surprise, um, meaning where I started this program as a, as a TV slash radio broadcast. What I'm doing each and every single one, I don't talk so much. So excuse me for that already, but hey, you paid the ticket. I'm the boss for the next 15 minutes at least. I do a lot of action with my body, which is my main instrument. Lately with Rock Dance Theater, I did introduce living instrument, which are mingled with choreography as well. So the idea is to kind of make a kind of a fusion, uh, if you will, where you have fashion, where you have visuals where you have guitar driven music which is one main element of rock dance theater because i figured you know what do what makes you happy and nothing makes me more happy than being on stage number one it's like imagine a situation when an artist gets stage for free and you can do whatever it's really can i do this oh, <laughs> amazing right they allow you to do these things and like four evenings in a row, a series. How cool is that? So I, you know, I just consider myself lucky really to be on stage and do something for you guys because I'm not doing it for myself. Well, maybe a little bit. It's all therapy, really. Cheaper than a psychologist, number one. Number two, you kind of get a chance to communicate on a different level. 
and I get to do that. So number three, um, something that I always considered very, very cool, yet didn't have a chance to, was to actually grab a guitar. And even though I can play all of the wrong notes, at least they are in tune. The best investment I've ever done, guitar tuner. <laughs> so either way, my guitar teacher, um, I think, could be proud because I'm not bullshitting on that level. Yeah, I really done my homework. Always stay in tune whatever you play. So yeah, um, this fusion that I'm talking about is kind of what we're trying to do over here. If you get a, ever get a chance to see one of our bigger shows, you're mostly welcome. Now we're friends on you know social media, so you can be getting notification. Ah, she's in this city. So if you like, you're mostly welcome. Um, one more thing that I wanted to talk to you um, about is expectations. For me, talking to people and sometimes to people from my own field, uh, the very interesting concept of expectation is always something you bring with you. Let's say you go to a gig, you pay your ticket for a concert, for a show, for whatever pretty much, uh, like today. And you always bring a kind of an expectation. Okay, I saw this title, I'm gonna go, and it's probably gonna be this, right? Do you do that in your head when you go to watch something unless it's your friends performing? Then I have no expectations. I know it's gonna be cool. Like, I just, I've just seen Roxy perform in Sweden. I was like, yeah, no expectation. He's, he's just gonna kick ass, you know? And it was fun, of course. He, di he did deliver, he did not screw anything up. All of the chords were, you know, proper, and it was a big rock show, and he, as he says. So, you know, it's one of these things that you kind of don't have to expect, you're just excited to get there. But yeah, um, coming back to my questions, do you kind of plan in your head an expectation when you come and then it's either yes, what I wanted to get from the stage, or nay, not at all. Come on, don't be shy. I can see your face expression. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So what happens if you're disappointed? Do you ask for a refund? Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I'm taking your money and I'm going, I'm going. And for me as a performer, you know, it's always, um, it's always either or. There is no shades of gray, like so many of my pants because it's acid washed. Um, it's always 100% yes, I love it, or 100% no, I fucking hated the thing. And it's a good thing because it's a question of taste, number one. And also, um, it does prove that an opinion, it's something you do not discuss. Opinion, I wanted to force that. Just because the P really stands out on the bass. I'm either gonna throw on a little bit of reverb over here or just limit the bass because this is pretty crazy. If you're gonna sustain, let me check how long. Wait, I'm blind. Literally seven and a half minutes of me talking still. <laughs> At least let's make it quality and not bass overdrive on the vocals, shall we? Unless you're screaming and playing, you know, goth death metal or whatever. I know one of you guys are. You admitted to that. Okay, how's that? Great. Yeah, the P is a little bit smaller. Cool, awesome. I did it. So yeah, um, expectation. Um, if you hate something, I have a question for you now. If you hate a show, why is it? Is it the artist or is it what he did on stage? Meaning the quality of the thing. I see you directly, so I might as well ask you. What do you think it is? Translation, anyone? Not enough alcohol. Yeah, that, that could be one reason, I know. You know, be sure to hit the bar properly before a gig, um, if it's open. <laughs> if it's a closed bar and the line is literally from here to there, meaning to Krakow, let's say. Good luck. You might be pissed, and then if you come to see, let's say, my show, you already come with an attitude. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, always like check that in your brain a little bit um, with what you plan. Either way, I wanted to thank you for the official part. I will ask a special person up on stage right now, just because he's the owner of the place and it's kind of political to do that, even though I'm here a third time in a row. No, but with all the respect, Donut, come on over, introduce yourself, um, and say how cool of a place you have over here. Uh, <laughs> he will hate me for this. He always does. But hey, I'm sorry. I'm the boss on stage. He allowed me. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. I wanted to introduce uh, Donut, if anyone doesn't know him yet. 
He's the kind gentleman to alive my craziness or therapy on stage. Either way, Rock Dance Theater has invaded. And if we're gonna be so lucky to get one more gig, meaning next week, I think we have a fourth one and the last one of the series, you know, hopefully you get to check it out. There will be a little bit of dance, there will be a little bit of music, at least a tryout. Wait, there's one thing I forgot to say. I'm not a guitar player. Yeah, <laughs> I always say that because I know I'm not and oh. it's just literally a couple of years that I've been learning this shit and you know what it really brings me joy that I can actually allow myself to do that more practice for me more torture for you I so don't care so you know uh, fourth show uh, of this series is gonna be totally different also because I'm gonna be dressed different